G'day folks, welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today for the nation, the 3rd of November 2015. This is our first one for the 2015-2016 season, so welcome back. This update sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter, and my name is Chris Nitzo. As night falls across Australia, we can see that we have a vigorous trough system, a very strong trough system, in fact, uh, pushing all the way north to the northern reaches of Australia from this mid-latitude low pressure system that's located here just to the west of Adelaide. We can see clouds streaming across a long way ahead of the trough itself and we can see some very strong thunderstorms developing along that trough line. When it comes to any tropical lows or tropical cyclones in the region, the Pacific, you can see while there's a lot of cloud activity there, there's no real organised convection occurring and none expected to occur. And further to the west, very little convective activity across Indonesia and uh, the Timor region either. So folks, at this stage, no cyclone potential in the next week or two. In fact, the only cyclone that was operational in the world was Tropical Cyclone Chapala, which made landfall in Yemen as a Category 3 on the Aussie scale, or a very marginal Category 3 on the Aussie scale, Category 1 on the Saffir Simpson scale. Uh, the first ever, and I do mean ever in the history of records, the first ever a tropical cyclone that was a category uh, that that was a hurricane uh, that has ever hit Yemen, and uh, certainly the strongest system to ever have gotten anywhere near the uh, Gulf of Aden. Some simply amazing imagery that I'm sure no one in the world has ever seen before. Uh, a tropical cyclone of this magnitude in this part of the world. So certainly uh, one for the record books, and to put that one in context uh, with, the, or put that one straight after the Mexican cyclone, uh, Cyclone Patricia, that hit the first Category 5 to ever hit Mexico. So folks, says, uh, it's been a massive, massive year in the Northern Hemisphere for cyclones. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which way you want to look at that, uh, it looks very, very opposite to what's going to happen over the Australian region this season. And if we take a look at the Bureau of Meteorology seasonal outlook here, we can see Queensland averages four cyclones. There's a fair chance that we're going to see less than that. And there's about a 73% chance of seeing less than four cyclones there. Uh, the Northern Territory region, including the Gulf of Carpentaria, averages three a year. Chance of seeing less there is around about 60%. So this is probably going to be the area closest to the norm. The northwestern region off the coast of the Pilbara and Kimberley are probably going to be the worst in terms of cyclone potential for this season, as in they're going to see the least amount of or, or the, the highest departure from the mean. I won't say the least amount of cyclones because they average the most for the Australian region, but the, le the, the greatest departure, so the highest negative anomalies uh, will be, or the strongest negative anomalies, I should say, will be present here in the northwest. So instead of five, we might be looking at, say, two, maybe three for the season. So there's an 85% chance here of seeing less than the average, which is five. And you can see that the percentage uh, there is the lowest of all of the uh, sub-basins of the Australian region. The chance of seeing more than 11 for the Australian region is 91%. So basically, uh, it's, sorry, 9%, which means it's basically a given now that we won't see uh, an an above average season for uh, for cyclone activity in Australia. In saying that, even though the forecasts are so low and so drastically different to the average uh, that we would normally expect, it only takes one or two big systems and we could be looking at, you know, a significant issue, particularly if they're large cyclones. So this doesn't tell us or show us whether or not the cyclones that do happen are going to be strong, are going to be large in nature. We just don't know those things. So while we know that the climatological pattern is not conducive for a good cyclone season, uh, we can't say whether or not the ones that do form are going to leave a very long lasting impact or whether they could just be marginal category ones. That's something that the outlook cannot tell us. I don't think we need to cover this in too much detail. The El Nino is still present, still getting stronger, expected to get stronger for another half a month to a month yet uh, before it starts to weaken out. Now, the, the hope, and I do stress this is the hope, the hope is that it moves from El Nino 
back into neutral region very, very quickly early in the new year because if it doesn't, we could be looking at a significantly very dry uh, wet season in the northern parts of Australia. So we're hoping that come January, February and March that this little arrow starts to point right back over here to neutral as quickly as possible. What tends to happen is when the El Nino breaks down fairly quickly, we tend to see a dramatic increase in rainfall uh, across eastern and northern Australia. Whereas a very slow and gradual breakdown of the El Nino uh, tends to not mean too much in terms of our rainfall potential. So what are the Aussie Oceans doing? Well, across the Coral Sea, we have slightly cooler than normal oceanic sea surface temperatures here, uh, around about uh, 0 to negative 1 degree anomalies. Uh, further to the east, across the Solomons, and then further to the east towards Fiji, though, we do have slightly positive anomalies, and that, uh, that will probably reflect in what we will see this season, which is an average to above average season, uh, of cyclone season out here in the southwest Pacific, yet a below average season near the Queen. Queensland coast. Further to the west, off the west coast of Australia, we have some very warm sea surface temperatures, much warmer than normal, uh, one to two degree anomalies here off the uh, west coast of the Pilbara. Uh, and what that is ad assisting in at the moment is dragging in a lot of tropical moisture here uh, and advecting a lot of moisture further to the south. And we're getting these massive uh, trough systems like the one that's currently going through central parts of Australia, being able to drag in a lot of moisture from these uh, much warmer than normal waters and we've got another uh, another situation in, in a few days time over WA where an upper level low will bring in and drag in a lot of tropical moisture from these warmer uh, oceanic sea surface temperatures uh, th these warmer oceans I should say and that would will, will help to assist in creating enhanced rainfall from that upper level low and trough feature so these sorts of things tend to happen when we have very warm seas just off the coast of WA and even to a lesser extent off the west coast of the NT. So the next four days of rain across uh, the, uh, the Australian continent, we're going to have we're going to see a dramatic increase in shower and thunderstorm potential up here in the northwestern top end. So Darwin, you will finally be in, in with a chance of some spectacular storms over the next few days. Uh, but uh, that that activity continues to track all the way through to all the way through the interior parts of of uh, the Northern Territory into South Australia, as well as western part, parts of Queensland. That activity will gradually push eastwards over the next few days across Queensland as well. So we're going to see showers and storms generally throughout the state at some stage over the next four days. As we go to the four-day period after, oh, by the way, let's not forget to mention the ama the amazing amount of rainfall across New South Wales, almost the entire state receiving very worthwhile rainfall here. Uh, falls of 25 plus millimetres expected across many parts, in fact most parts if not all parts of New South Wales at some stage over the next four to seven days. On days four to eight we can see falls start to become a little bit more patchy, uh, a lot, a lot more, a lot more rainfall across the southeast corner of the state of Queensland. We will see some very heavy showers and storms developing here, possibility of some severe activity as well. And then extending back here to the northwest, all the way through into the Northern Territory. So there, there are positive signs there, folks, that, that we will see uh, a fair amount of rainfall across large parts of the continent. While this rainfall isn't necessarily tropical in nature, it's being induced by a trough, the warm ocean, ocean sea surface temperatures across warm oceans, again, I, I keep mistaking that, the warm oceans across here in the northwestern parts of the continent are helping to drag in a lot more moisture than we would normally expect into these trough systems and therefore they're enhancing the rainfall that comes out of them. Uh, so we can see over the next eight, over the next eight days, folks, it's, it's just generally where we're going to be in a very wet period across Australia, which is great news for a lot of farmers and graziers across the country. In saying that, however, just be aware the falls from this uh, are going to be quite patchy because they're going to be storm falls as opposed to general rain. Uh, while we have a very strong trough at the moment with general rain, the the consensus of the computer models is that as that tracks eastwards, we're going to start to see more discrete thunderstorm cells. And uh, while there might be a line of storms, uh, we may not see that uh, all, well, we definitely won't see all points along that line receiving equal amounts of rainfall. So it will be reasonably patchy, but hopefully there's going to be enough of them that somewhere everyone, or somehow everyone, will receive something out of them. That's the hope anyway.
The usual cold prits over the next eight days are the Pilbara, West Kimberley and the northeast coast of Queensland. Probably quite unlikely to see too much activity from that. Also the northeastern parts of the Northern Territory in here probably going to miss out on the bulk of that activity over the next week. However, particularly for the northeast coast of Queensland, there are some signs that the trough system may linger in through here in the longer term. So perhaps uh, we might see computer models start to become a little bit more friendly towards north Queensland uh, later on through the weekend and into early next week. But uh, at this stage, that's not the case. Thanks for watching this first update. We'll have another one for you next Tuesday. If you are interested in further information and more details in, in our video updates, please consider subscribing to Oz Cyclone Chasers on our website at ozcyclonechasers.com.au. Enjoy your week and we'll talk again next Tuesday.